Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering question number nine from the October 2022 Pure Mathematics P1 International A Level Excel paper. This question is the last question on this paper. And this question here it starts off with this sketch which shows the curve C, called C, with the equation y equals a half x squared minus 10x plus 22. We've got to write this in the form. Um, in the completed square form, basically. We've got to complete the square for part A. So we need to complete the square for a half x squared minus 10x plus 22, um, where A, B, and C are constants to be found. So this is all about completing the square, this first part of this question. Important skill that we need to know. Um, now, first of all, when we have something like um, in, in this form, what we want to do, when we want to complete the square, what we want to do is we want to write the x squared term with a coefficient of 1. All right, so we start off with y equals a half x squared minus 10x plus 22. Now, the way I like to do it, and people do it in different ways, is I like to concentrate on these two terms first. I don't worry about the term at the end. I'll deal with that at the end. So what I need to do is I want you to say 1x squared, not a half x squared. So what I can do is... I mean, I can't say let's multiply by two, you know, it's like this is an expression, right? So I'm going to take out a half as a factor from these two terms. So I have a half times x squared minus. Now, if I take out a half from here, this is going to leave me with 5x. So it's going to leave me with 20x. Okay, because a half times 20 is 10, all right? If I take out a half from here, it's like you've got to, uh, you know, divide this by a half to make it become 10. So you've got to, like, basically multiply it by 2. So you've got to take a half out from these two. So this should be the same as this. Okay, if I, if I was taking out 2 from here, if it was 2x squared, then there'll be 2 and that'll be a 5. But because I'm taking out a half, there has to be a 20 here. When I expand this, it's going to give me half x squared minus 10x when I expand this. Then I've got my plus 22 at the end, which I'm going to write down. Okay, now... I'm ready to complete the square. This part in here now is ready for me to complete the square for. Okay, I, complete, I can complete the square for this. And to complete the square, so I'm going to write this half outside. I'm going to put this bracket to make it separate from the rest of it. Now I'm going to complete the square for what's in here. So when you complete the square, you write a bracket which is squared. You write x. Wherever sign comes there, you write that sign. And you take this term and you write a half of just the coefficient so i'm going to write 10. when i expand this i'm going to get x squared minus 10x minus another 10x which is minus 20x but then i'm going to get plus 100 which i don't need i don't want that plus 100 because i square this minus 10 i'm going to get plus 100. all i want this to become is x squared minus 20x if i expand this i'll get x squared minus 20x plus 100. so i've got to take away that 100 so that this what's in yellow here and what's in yellow here are the same. These two are now the same thing. This is the same as that exactly. Right? So now I can continue by expanding this bracket. So I have a half times x minus 10 squared. And a half times minus 10 is minus, minus 100, sorry, is minus 50 plus 22. So therefore I can say y is equal to a half times x minus 10 squared minus 50 plus 22 is minus 28. Minus 28. Okay, just confirm that. You got 50 minus 22 to be opposite sign, 20 minus 28. Right, good. So there we have now written this in the form that they asked us to write it in. Okay, we could, if you want, say a equals a half. You don't have to just write it in the form, so it doesn't say you have to write them down, but you can. b equals negative 10 and c equals negative 28. Okay, so there we have um, written this in the complete square form. Then it says the point M, which is this point here, is the minimum turning point of C, as shown in figure 3. Uh, deduce the coordinates of M. Now, we can very easily just use this form, and sometimes the question might even say, hence, okay, using your part answer to part A, deduce the coordinates of M, so you should know how to do this. When you've completed the square, you have put it in a form which you can quite easily write down the coordinates of the um, minimum or maximum point. In this case, it's a minimum point because you have a quadratic which opens 
upwards smiley face because the coefficient of x squared is positive right but what we can see here is that the x coordinate of the turning point is going to be 10 and the y coordinate is negative 28 okay and how does that make sense well you have y equals and if we write it in completing the square form, a half times a half times x minus 10 squared minus 28. Basically, the lowest that this thing can ever become is negative 28 because this part of it here, this part of it here is always going to be positive. Right? That's always going to be positive because you're going to have something inside here that's squared. So whatever value x is, this is going to be positive. You're going to have a half time something positive, okay, because you're going to have to square this bracket. So you're going to always have minus 28 plus something. Now the least that this can ever be, the least that you're going to add to 28 is 0. Okay, this can become 0, all right, in which case the lowest that this can ever reach is negative 28. That's why the y coordinate is negative 28. And when does this thing become 0? Well, this whole thing becomes 0 when x equals 10. When you put 10 into here, this thing becomes 0, and you're left with negative 28 as what's left behind. So when x equals 10, you know, you have 10 and negative 28 is the minimum point. So you don't have to differentiate. You could differentiate this if you wanted to. You could find dy dx then equate it to 0. Okay, you could also use, some people use x equals minus b over 2a to find the x-coordinate okay which is finding the x one the vertex but that's basically what we're doing here because when we complete the square that's what we do okay that's exactly what we do when we complete the square basically all right so this is actually taken from completing the square all right so um we've already had to complete the square anyway so it's very easy just to read from here 10 it's always going to be the same sign for the y coordinate but the opposite sign for the x coordinate because why it's the x value that makes this bracket zero is what we need for the x coordinate and whatever's left behind after that for the y coordinate so that is or those are the coordinates of the minimum turning point of this graph so what i'm going to do here because this is a long question and this is one of those um skills that a lot of students uh you know need i'm going to save this as a separate video for part a and part b which is linked to completing the square okay it's linked to completing the square so I will save that as a separate video and I'll do the other parts in separate videos as well just so I can save them in the playlist dealing with topics in a more efficient way. So part B is following or part C is following in, in the next video. You'll find it in the playlist. So other questions from this paper including the next question, next part of this question will be found in the playlist over here. Other questions dealing with um, completing the square can be found in the playlist that will appear over here. Uh, you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.